Would you like to know why Cloud Architect, Enterprise Architect, Security Architect, and all of the IT Architect careers are immune from being replaced by AI? If so, this video is for you. In this video, we will discuss why certain careers like the Cloud Architect or the Solutions Architect or the AI Architect cannot be replaced by AI. We'll also talk about why some careers like software development or potentially cloud engineering can be partially replaced by AI, but why all IT architect careers are gonna be safe and why AI actually creates more jobs for cloud architects, enterprise architects, AI architects, and others. Now to understand why some jobs can be brutally impacted by AI, such as software development and other jobs like uh, IT architecture, like enterprise architecture actually gain more jobs is really related to what AI can do versus what the IT architect does in their job. So let's talk about things that AI can do. AI can write code and it's not perfect yet, but right now Google's writing 25% of their code with AI and AI is getting better every day. So AI can in many cases reduce an organization's need for software developers. AI can also write an infrastructure as code script like Terraform, which a cloud engineer might do, a Bash shell script, which a cloud engineer might also write, or a Windows PowerShell script, which a sysadmin or a cloud engineer could also do, or, a, or anything like that. So those are careers that we have to be very concerned about AI because the person in a cloud engineer role will have to prove that they're better than AI just to get a job. But that's because their jobs are doing things that AI can do. Now let's talk about what AI can also do. It can analyze data and it can also make predictions. And AI can also automate tasks. So imagine a company that's saying, wow, I can write some of my code with AI. I can use AI to make better business predictions. So we know how and where to invest our money in the things that are greatest return for us, for example. And if we automate things, not only do we deplete error, but we can also reduce our costs. So that's the way the businesses see AI. So the businesses say, wow, we need more of this stuff. So now let's talk about what a cloud architect does or what an AI architect does or what an enterprise architect does in our job. So what do we do as cloud architects? Well, we meet with executives and stakeholders. We have to understand the needs of the business, the way the business works, the goals of the business, the workflows are the way people do things. And that means meeting with executives and stakeholders. That cannot be done by AI, but it's one of the most critical roles for the cloud architect or the enterprise architect. Now, whenever we compare different technologies, there's no such thing as perfect technologies in architecture. One technology, for example, will do one thing very well but it won't do other things well at all. And another architecture uh, approach might do a couple of things fairly well, but miss the, something else that could, the, the other architecture does very well. And that's where the cloud architect or the enterprise architect has to evaluate which of the trades and then make recommendations to the client's executives. Now that kind of analysis takes understanding of the people, the processes, the technology, and the way people want to work or aren't even willing to work and are their capabilities. So that's a person to person job. Now, the next thing we do as cloud architects or enterprise architects or any architect in general is we have to convince the client to actually adopt the technology for whatever business enhancement they're looking for. So that means sales and AI does not sell. AI cannot go to an executive and convince them to spend a billion dollars on a various technology. It takes deep relationships. It takes complete knowledge of the business. So because most cloud architects, enterprise architects, solutions architects have some version of sales in their job, uh, again, we can't uh, be replaced by AI doing that. Now, architecture is a team sport. When it comes to designing an architecture for a client that's going to basically understand their business, understand their optimal business processes, work backwards from the goals of the business and the optimal business processes to figure out what kind of technology the organization needs, uh, lead an organizational design team to create that actual strategy or blueprint, uh, then be able to present that blueprint back to the stakeholders and get stakeholder feedback on that blueprint and have the architecture team uh, enhance that blueprint. That is leadership. And again, that is a personal feeling, being able to speak to people, to connect with others, to solve their challenges. So again, good news. You see these architecture roles are immune. 
Now, another thing we do as architects is we lead proof of concept, where we scope the proof of concept, we determine the requirements for the proof of concept, we determine what the test the thing is that we're actually testing and how we will prove success. We lead and manage the proof of concept team. So again, here's another leadership thing that uh, architects do in our jobs, which is not an AI replaceable thing. Now we create architectural roadmaps for the organization. Here's where you're now, here's where you're going. Uh, these are your growth needs. So what, these are the ways to get there in the future. Again, human oriented, not AI. It's not like writing code. This is deep analytical thought. This is reasoning. This is meeting with people and this is judgment. Now, what else are we really doing? We're, the goal of architecture truthfully is to align the main forces of business, which are people, processes, and technology to help that organization get its desired results. So that means meeting with people, meeting with stakeholders, walking around a business, asking what's going on, asking client, clients where their pain points are, asking employees where their pain points are. All things we do as architects, and again, none of this can be done by AI. Now, another thing we do a lot of as architects is we present at conferences, we present at executive meetings, me uh, briefings, we present to the board and the C-suite. So lots of presentations in our job. Now, in any architecture role, like a cloud architect or enterprise architect, as soon as we want to introduce any kind of major change, now that's going to affect the people that are there. So we always have to what's called lead the cultural change for innovation, cloud adoption, what have you. And that means uh, getting stakeholder uh, input and buy-in, finding champions to support your cause throughout the organization, creation of um, marketing collateral and training materials a to, about the architecture to the organization that's going to adopt it. So there's a lot of that work that goes in. And again, this is human to human. Uh, we have to manage vendors. We have to select vendors. We main tune various things to a common architectural framework like TOGAF or Zachman, for example. All this is person to person. And we design disaster recovery plans, business continuity plans, which involves learning which parts of the business, for example, are critical and what needs to happen. So all of that is all person to person. So, if you really look at the things we're doing as a cloud architect, almost everything in the cloud architect or enterprise architect role or security architect role involves leading teams, advising customers, planning, holding conversations, anything related to human to human skills and all things that AI cannot do, which is why I recommend now cloud architect careers and AI architect careers and security architect careers and even network architect careers is not only one of the highest paying careers in the world, but a career that you should think about for 2025 and beyond because we can't be replaced by AI. And all these new technologies that exist mean more opportunities for business, which means they actually hire more architects in the world of AI than before. Now, if you're looking to start your architect career, whether it be a cloud architect or a security architect or an AI architect or even a network architect, join us in a free architecture web webinar where we'll go over the role, what we need, what we do, what the skills that you would actually need, the things that you actually have to master. And I'll also answer any career questions you like live and free on Zoom in these free architecture webinars. And the link for these free cloud architect, AI architect, security architect webinars is in the description of this video. Also in the description of this video are guides on winning the, the art interview, for example, to help you become a cloud architect or a security architect or enterprise architect, uh, documents on how to become a cloud architect or how to become an enterprise architect, and so many other things to assist you in your IT architecture career. So uh, please uh, check out the description of this video, stop by for a free webinar and pick up some documents to help you in your architecture career. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified notified of new videos to help you in your cloud architect, enterprise architect, or security architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you soon.